Hello, I'm Adrian and today I want to talk about six, what six are and how they might be useful to you in creating interesting and inventive rhythm guitar parts. Now, I really love this particular sound and it's a sound that I've always associated with players like Steve Cropper and that whole Memphis soul R&B style of guitar playing. But I think it's a sound that can be applied across a whole range of different styles and I think it's a really useful and versatile technique for any rhythm guitar player to have under their fingers. So what I'm going to do in this lesson is I'm going to take you through exactly what I played at the start but beyond that I think what I'd like you to take away from this lesson is a real understanding of how sixths work and the ability to create and improvise these kind of parts on your own. So let's get started. First of all then, what do people mean when they talk about six? Now it's really fairly straightforward. We're just dealing with a pair of notes that are six apart in the musical alphabet. So if we took a C note, for instance, here at the, the fifth fret on the third string, count up six notes in the C major scale. One, two, three, four, five, six. We arrive at this A note, uh, play the C and the A together, and we have ourselves a six. Um, strictly speaking, this is called a major six. Um, you can also play a minor six, which you do by just flattening that highest note, making the A an A flat, and you've got a minor six. So those are the two shapes that I'm going to be dealing with in this lesson. I don't want it to turn into some big theory lesson, but the, that, that's uh, essentially what's going on in, in music theory terms. Um, in practical terms, on the guitar, you can see that we can play this major six with this kind of finger shape. I'm playing it on the first string and on the third string uh, with my third finger and second finger and they're, they're at the same fret. So I'm, I'm at the fifth fret here on both the top string and the uh, and the third string. Um, if you want to play a minor six, um, the note on the top string is just one fret lower. So I've got the, this note here, the A flat and the C here. That gives you the uh, the minor six. Um, exactly the same shapes will work when played on the second and fourth strings as well. So uh, we're going to be looking at those those a little bit too. So um, I'm going to take you through exactly what I played at the start of this lesson, and, and you'll see that I'm kind of playing a combination of these two six shapes and relating them to the particular chord progression that that, that I'm dealing with. So. Why don't I start by just taking you through the, the basic chord progression. Um, I had uh, four chords. I, I had an A, an E, a G, and a D. A very uh, common kind of solely style chord progression. We've just got the one chord, the five, flat seven chord, and the, uh, the four chord before it goes, goes round back to the one. We've got a, a bar on each of those chords, the, the particular chord voicings I'm using, I'm just playing on the top four strings. So I've got this kind of A, a chord shape. It's, it's basically the top part of, a, of a, a regular A bar chord. I'm just playing the seventh fret on the fourth string, sixth fret on the third string, and the fifth fret on the top two strings. Uh, then I'm going to this E chord voicing, which is, is really nice. It's the sixth fret on the fourth string, 4th fret on the 3rd string, 5th fret on the 2nd string, and 4th fret on the, the top string. So, so um, I suppose that's a first inversion E chord if you like. It's got the 3rd got the there, the, uh, the G sharp in the bass. Um, you could see it as being part of this kind of C bar chord if you're familiar with that whole caged way of looking at, at the neck. But I, I'm just playing the top 4 strings there. So I've got A, E, then I'm doing exactly the same thing, two frets lower. I'm playing G here at the, the third fret, and then in the second position, uh, I'm playing the D. So that's the, the basic chord progression that I'm, I'm then going to develop by using some of these six ideas. So that the first thing I do in the little, the little piece that I played at the start of the lesson is I, I just kind of play, play through the, the basic chord progression and establish a, a bit of a groove. So I think I play it something like this. Kind of, kind of going down. There's a quick, quick up of the pick. One, two, three, four. One, two. Some, something like that with the with the right hands. There's a quick kind of down, up, down, and then another down, down. So 
that's the first four bars. Then I go into the first kind of sixth idea. And uh, I, I like to associate these six ideas with the actual chord shape. So if I'm playing an A chord, um, I'm going to be using these three sixth shapes. They really fit the sound of that chord nicely. So I'm starting here, it's the sixth fret on the third string and the fifth fret on the top string. Then I've got the second shape, which is the seventh fret on both the third and top strings. And then I move that two frets higher to the ninth fret. So I've got these three, three little finger shapes. Uh, and they all fit really nicely with that A chord. And what I can do is I can just use these in various ways to create an interesting guitar part. So I can sort of go up, I can go down, uh, I can kind of slide between them. Um, I can kind of uh, do pick and finger stuff. Um, I can vary the rhythm and, uh, and uh, sort of make things interesting in, in various, various different ways. So with the A chord, those are the three shapes that I'm using. When the harmony switches to the E chord, I'm using these three shapes. And again, I like to associate those shapes with the chord shape in, the, in, in my mind, just so I can easily kind of access those six and, 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 and use them and improvise with them. So um, got the E chord shape there and the first sixth shape I've got here, that's the fifth fret on the second string, sixth fret on the fourth string, going up to the seventh fret on the second and fourth strings, then up to the ninth fret on the same strings. So we've got the, the same sort of trio of six shapes there that fit, fit the next chord. Um, and then the whole thing is just repeating two frets lower. So over the G chord, I'm playing around with these three shapes. And over the D chord, I'm playing around with these three shapes. So that's, that's the main thing that I want you to get from this lesson, I think, is you've got a chord shape and then sort of close by that chord shape, you've got these six, which you can draw upon to, to spice up your, your rhythm guitar playing. So let me continue then by kind of taking you through all, all the different variations that, that I play in, at, at the start of, of the lesson. So after I've established the, the basic groove, um, the next four bars goes like this. So I'm, I'm strumming the A chord to start with, then I'm sliding up to this sixth shape at the, uh, the ninth fret, then coming down to the seventh fret and then down to the, the fifth fret and the sixth fret. So it's one, two and three and four. So I strum the chord, the first sixth shape, I'm sliding into it and I'm playing the third string and then the top string. And then I'm playing both the notes together for the other two sixth shapes. Uh, now you've got the option of doing that with your pick. Uh, personally, I quite like to play six with a kind of pick and fingers technique. So I'm using my pick on the lower note of the pair and my middle finger of my right hand to play the higher note of the pair. So we, we've got this kind of thing going on. Then next bar, I'm actually just gonna play the basic chord, the E chord. And then I'm gonna repeat it two frets lower. So G. like so. A bit faster, two, three, four, two, three, four. So that's, that's the, the first, first variation I'm playing. Ne next I play something like this. So here I'm kind of embellishing the E chord and the D chord with six. So I start off, I'm just playing the A chord twice. Then harmony changes to E and I'm sliding up to the, to the highest of our uh, trio of, of six shapes here at the ninth fret. Um, because it's played over the E chord, I'm now playing on the second and fourth string. So I'm playing the ninth fret, then the seventh fret, and then the fifth 
and uh, sixth fret. So um, again, I'm staggering the notes in that first sixth shape, playing the the D string, then the B, and the next two pairs of notes I'm playing together uh, sim simultaneously. So. Uh, then exactly the same thing happens um, over the G and the D chords, two frets lower. Like so. Um, next variation um, is, is all six. I think I, I play this. Um, so fairly simple really, I'm just using all three of those six shapes over, over each chord. So um, over the A chord I'm, I'm using the first shape, second shape, sliding up to the ninth fret and then going back down again. Um, over the D chord it's the same kind of idea moved over to the next set of strings. Um, so that's over the, uh, over the E chord, sorry. Um, uh, then over the, uh, the G chord, same kind of thing. D chord. So I hope you can see that I'm just using those three sets of six but just taking it through the chord progression. So all of these I'm playing simultaneously with pick and fingers. Sometimes I might just be sliding into some of these pairs of notes as well, just to sort of um, add a little bit more, more interest. Um, next four bars, I think I'm getting even more slidey. I'm, do I'm doing something like this. So really just using exactly those same sets of six shapes. Um, this time uh, on the A chord, I'm, I'm starting with the, the ninth fret sliding down to the 7th fret and back again, then down to the 7th fret, um, uh, then actually back to the 5th the and 6th frets there, so it's a um, uh, similar thing over the E chord, um, change to the next set of strings, and once again the same thing, two frets lower over the G and the D. And uh, then I think I do one final variation where I, I try and do a, a bit more of a kind of country chicken picking thing. That, that works really well with 6-2 because you can use that kind of pick and finger technique and you can just give the, uh, the top note a bit of a snap with your finger, maybe use a little bit of palm muting and, and you get a nice kind of twangy country sound. So I think I was doing something uh, like this. Really exactly the same notes and sets of six that I'm using. I'm just sliding into the, the lower of the pair of notes and then snapping the, the top note with the middle finger of my right hand. I'm using a bit more of a syncopated rhythm as well. Two, three, four. Then shift the whole thing over to the next set of strings and two frets lower over the G and the D. Um, and there we go. So why don't I finish by just playing you through um, the entire kind of piece or, or study slowly. Um, I, I will put the music to this up on my website so you can uh, follow through uh, using that and, and learn it at your, your own kind of pace. But let, let me just play the, the whole thing for you from, from the top. We've got one, two, three, four.
Well, there we go. What I suggest you do is learn this little piece note for note to start with, and then you can uh, kind of run with the basic idea, maybe apply it to some songs that you know or to some chord progressions of your own and, and see where it leads you. Um, I think in real playing situations, you probably want to be a bit more tasteful than I'm being in this particular piece. I mean, I think for demonstration purposes, I'm cramming in all these different sixth ideas, which is probably a little bit over the top for, for a real piece of music. So I, I think when you're playing these ideas um, in your own songs or somebody else's songs, you probably want to be a bit more sparse and a bit more tasteful. But uh, there's no harm in sort of going over the top when you're practicing this idea just to get it into your playing properly. Well, there we go. I hope you found this lesson useful and I hope it helps you get these kind of six ideas into your own playing. I'm going to put the full tab and music to accompany this lesson up on my website. There'll be a link underneath this video. Also, I'll try and post the backing track up there as well, which you might like to jam along to. That will really help with your, your feel and your timing. Uh, good luck with all of this and I hope to see you again for some more lessons very soon. Bye bye.